But we're two white guys talking yeah. here, yeah. right? Yeah. And so Toronto yeah. is yeah. no longer white. It's exactly. Filipino, I'm with it's Iranian, yeah, 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 it's Taiwanese, yeah, 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 it's Chinese. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. How do you? How do we well, have the, all these communities find something together? How do they? Well, no, do I don't speak, think you, you need know, to the kink find in my it hair together. Is, you you find you build towards it. The kink in my hair was a really good uh, launching point. Right. But the <laughs> dilemma is that the rewards are so good that. As soon as you got a magic combination, somebody's going to want to, you know, buy you off. And Is that good or bad? Well, it's, it's not good in this case because there's no real interesting follow-up. I mean, what was the what was the key for me in Kick of My Hair? It was that writer with her absolute. Hunger and confidence and all Who the rest it? of it. Not Janet Sears. No, 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 no. no. This no, is. Uh, no. I'm sorry. Trey. Trey Anthony. That's right. Uh huh. But the other part is Wayne Mangeshi, who is a wonderful, exciting young writer or director. Sorry, I'm off on another tangent there. Uh, and this Wayne is was a magic formula into that. But you know, when Trey tried to do her, her follow up. For some reason or other, Wayne wasn't in the, the mix, and for some reason, I haven't heard of the show since it tried to go into right. Diesel Diner, Diesel Playhouse there, and didn't work. So um, I guess Wayne I'm actually then did a collaboration with uh, what's the name? Debbie Young. Hmm? Debbie Young, and that played in here and was fantastic. They both then were offered the rewards of going in and joining. Um, Soul Peppers Development Conservatory, or whatever they're calling that. <laughs> okay? And we'll see what happens out of that. But uh, already, I think Debbie is being pulled away from the magic of that uh, collaborative source. So it'll be interesting to see what Wayne does in the mix. But somehow, what got lost in that also was it was a wonderful thing when it played at Pass Marai, which was there were black producers for it. Mainly guys who were there because these women were sexy and they wanted to hang around and theater became sexy in some way or form. But they threw some money on the table for that, which was very interesting. And then they felt really good when it went to uh, the Mervishes and everybody was justified and all this sort of thing. But none of the follow-up has been to excite or connect with that. So for me, that's the commercialism side of Toronto coming into again lobotomize. Well, it's what either commercial magic. or it's the ego need <clears throat> being fulfilled mm -hmm. by you know by you know flattery and encouraging people to kind of conform into a mold. And you know maybe that'll work. So far, I haven't seen any really encouraging examples. And I think you know if you would say. Traditional means and anarchy, I think it's a, you know, anarchy seven, traditional means one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Traditional means being half-life, probably. So it went through a structure, a writing structure, careful director, starting, you know, in a small environment and working out from that and, and kicking over into another. But are we, like, stumbling in the dark and ham-fisted with, with so many communities that make up who we are now? And, I mean, apart from Sohil Parson now doing, you know, the, the sheep and the whale, there's not a lot. Well, you know, go on. I don't see shows from the Chinese no, the community. The no, the Philippines happen. Oh, you mean in the, within these spaces? Well, Ken tries every within once our in theater, a while. Within no, the theater in Toronto. Uh, Factory tries every once in a while to hook within that. Pass Marai had, if, if, in my opinion, they had the golden way shown last year in the fall season here. They had Wayne in this space, a fantastic young male writer called Pierre, something Pierre, doing two one-act shows in the, in the space next door. And uh, a bunch of other stuff, I think there was, you know, there was a, a Jewish woman doing something. And, and it was a, just a fantastic amount of stuff. But they blew all their wad on it. I mean, in the bad old days, I would have been exploiting the shit out of these people instead of encouraging them to think that they can earn a living. How? How do you mean exploiting well, the shit out of Well, breaking the people? rules. Like, by just going not on the equity. Them, no, well, no, but they, they played equity could not accommodate or they didn't, weren't interested in accommodating the fact that to make this thing work, actors were performing something like three, three times, four times a week and getting a full week's salary for it. 
you know, and there were no crossover stage managers, so it, it turned out to be, a, you know, a, a pricey comfort zone killing the art. That's what well, you're saying. It, a pricey mechanism, <clears throat> making a hot house experience that could not be sustained, even if it had started to work. And the point on something like that is that you would have to continue it for a long period of time, 